in critiquing yourself as a boss over the last uh, several years, what do you think you've done well and what are you continuing to work on or what are you struggling with? Yeah, um, I think one of the things that I do incredibly well uh, is that I understand that I am a phenomenal communicator and that's something that I instill in my employees. So there are a lot of people who've worked for me over the years, even when I was at Gap, or when they started working for me, they didn't have a voice. I had to reach inside and help them find that voice and instill confidence in them that they have the skills, that there's no reason that they should be stuttering in a meeting, that they have the ability to tell a great visual story. Um, and I think that's a huge value of, of Micmac and the culture. Things that I'm terrible at, which there are certainly plenty. Um, you know, when I started Micmac to build a software company, I don't have any technical expertise. So one of the first things that I did was uh, approach Oscar Saldar. So Oscar was the founding CTO of Uber, and I needed him to vet technical talent for me. Um, in return, he was building a new type of company, and he was actually looking to engage brand marketers. So one of the things that I've recognized in terms of surrounding yourself with advisors is that everything goes two ways. Like there's a mutual value exchange that needs to happen. Um, and Oscar has been a huge mentor to me in terms of sharpening my technical expertise, helping me build out the right product team, uh, understanding what it takes to, to truly create defensible software. Just to jump back before I move on, one thing I've been thinking a lot about is building up self-esteem and confidence. How do you find the right balance between instilling confidence versus creating delusion and entitlement? I think it's an extremely fine. <laughs> you like that one? I, I think it's, you know, I've been spending a lot of time on this. I'm just curious to get your perspective on it. I think it's an extremely fine line and, you know, I think that, for example, just being selfish for a minute, I think I've done too much of that at Wine Library and VaynerMedia, which has then created an undercurrent of entitlement, which takes a lot of time to then correct, and it's painful to start introducing radical candor to massive optimism. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do you, <laughs> how, do you, uh, how do you think about that? Um, I think, it's, it's a tough question. Um, I think one of the things is, I'm really public with my team, my board, my clients about my own mistakes. And so uh, having humility and pride in your voice at the same time, I think is what creates like, authentic communication. So with my team, like, no one gets penalized for making small mistakes because we're all human. I would say the big thing is if things were happening over time and we gave someone the benefit to show growth in their role, you know, then we would sit down and talk about, okay, how do we put you on a performance review that makes sense for the business and help you achieve these certain milestones? So I think the fact that I have such humility with my team, like Gary and I had a board meeting yesterday. I left the board meeting, I go back to my office, and of course my team wants to know how the board meeting went. I told them exactly how it went because there's nothing to hide. So I told them the good, the bad, and having that level of humility I think is the balance with having pride in your own voice. 